Good day, and welcome to this special edition with Ty and Betsy Tice. Since we're coming up on uh, July 4th, this special edition of this podcast is called, Are You Free or a Slave? During this July 4th holiday, we'll be celebrating our physical and our spiritual freedom. Because when the pilgrims came to this country, it was because they, they desired spiritual freedom. And that's still the, the desire of the majority of people that live in the United States. How important is freedom? There is a story of a young boy who was always catching and caging wild things. He found a very young mockingbird and placed it in a cage outside of his home. On the second day, he saw a mother bird fly to the cage and feed the young bird through the bars. This pleased the young boy. But then the following morning, he found the little bird lying on the bottom of the cage, dead. This so disappointed him. Later, a man of great knowledge explained to him, a mother mockingbird finding her young in a cage will sometimes take a poisonous berry and, and feed it to their baby that's in a cage. She evidently thinks that it's better for one she loves to die rather than live in captivity. Uh, honey, you're going to have to help me on this. Uh, who was it that said, give me liberty or give me death? Was it Nathan Hale? She's shaking her head yes. So hopefully if it is or isn't, we'll let you correct it if we're wrong on it. Or it might be Patrick Henry. Or it might be Patrick Henry. But one of the two of them said, give me liberty or give me death. This mother mockingbird chose for her baby to have death rather than to live in captivity. In this day and age, there are many people that are living as slaves, even though they claim they're free. And then there are many that are free, that are slaves, that are actually living in freedom. And we're going to go more into depth in that. We're not going to get very political here, though I know some of you would love to go down that path. But hey, we're ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll let you figure out the politics of all of this, but we're going to stick to what the scripture says for each and every one of us. Uh, Betsy, why don't you go ahead and start? Paul stresses freedom to the Galatians, and we read from chapter 5, verses 1 through 26 in the New Living Translation. So Christ has made us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get all tied up again in the slave, slaves of chains of slavery to Jewish laws and ceremonies. Listen to me, for this is serious. If you are counting on circumcision and keeping the Jewish laws to make you right with God, then Christ cannot save you. I'll say it again. Anyone trying to find favor with God by being circumcised must always obey every other Jewish law or parish. Christ is useless to you if you are counting on clearing your debt to God by keeping those laws. You are lost from God's grace. But we, by the help of the Holy Spirit, are counting on Christ's death to clear away our sins and make us right with God. And we, to whom Christ has given eternal life don't need to worry about whether we have been circumcised or not or whether we are obeying the Jewish ceremonies or not for all we need is faith working through love you are getting along so well who has interfered with you to hold you back from following the truth it certainly isn't God who has done it for he is the one who has called you to freedom in Christ but it takes only one wrong person among you to infect all the others. 
I am trusting the Lord to bring you back to believing, as I do about these things. God will deal with that person, whoever he is, who has been troubling and confusing you. Some people even say that I myself am preaching that circumcision and Jewish laws are necessary to the plan of salvation. Well, if I preached that, I would be persecuted no more, for that message doesn't offend anyone. The fact that I am still being persecuted proves that I am still preaching salvation through faith in the cross of Christ alone. I only wish these teachers who want you to cut yourselves by being circumcised would cut themselves off from you and leave you alone. For, dear brothers, you have been given freedom, not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love others as you love yourself. But if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always critical and catty, watch out. Beware of ruining each other. I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go and what to do, and then you won't always be doing the wrong things your evil nature wants you to do. For we naturally love to do evil things that are just the opposite from the things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do. And the good things we want to do when the Spirit has his way with us are just the opposite of our natural desires. These two forces within us are constantly fighting each other to win control over us, and our wishes are never free from their pressures. When you are guided by the Holy Spirit, you need no longer force yourself to obey Jewish laws. But when you follow your own wrong inclinations, your lives will produce those evil results. Impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, spiritism, that is encouraging the activity of demons, hatred and fighting, jealousy and anger, constant effort to get the best for yourself, complaints and criticisms. The feeling that everyone else is wrong except those in your own little group. And there will be wrong doctrine, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and all that sort of thing. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here there is no conflict with Jewish laws. Those who belong to Christ have nailed their natural evil desires to his cross and crucified them there. If we are living now by the Holy Spirit's power, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Then we won't need to look for honors and popularity, which lead to jealousy and hard feelings. The use of freedom in the text means unrestrained to go at pleasure as a citizen, not a slave. Paul is addressing the Galatians, and he says that Christ has set you free. Enjoy your freedom. Then he admonishes them to stand firm in that state of liberty. Flee from obligation and liability. Now, that's not the obligation and liability that God requires of us. That's the obligation and liability that man puts on us over and above what God calls. Then, he cautions them to not become burdened again by a yoke of bondage or slavery. Now, I have to step in here at this point in time and make a little statement. Paul himself called himself a bondservant of Jesus Christ. What's the difference between that and slavery? Slavery is when somebody buys you against your objections and you are brought into control in slavery with no control over your life. A bond servant says, I am willing to give myself completely to serve another 
and in doing so, I bond myself to them. That's the difference between bond servant and slavery. It is obvious that they did not take his cautions very serious. By verse 7, we were running a good race. Who cut in upon you and kept you from obeying the truth? Something that had devoured the believers and they had lost their freedom, allowed themselves to become slaves once again. You know, we see that so much in America today. We see those that were once slaves, and in fact, they have been bought by others, and they're literally slaves again. Many times they won't admit it, but it's the truth. Then Paul explains what was behind their loss of freedom and how it happened in verses 8 and 9. This kind of permission does not come from the one who calls you. Christ had called them to freedom. But a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. It doesn't leave anything unpure. It actually purifies everything. The scripture here is clear that freedom comes by the presence of the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians three seventeen and 18, we read, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And we read in Galatians 5, 13 and 16, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. What causes a believer to trade their freedom for bondage and slavery? One is a loss of love. Business and mixed priorities. Cooling of passion and fire. I want to stop here and give you a little anecdote. God uses our passion that he gives us for his glory. But it comes with a purifying of the Holy Spirit fire that makes it soft and pliable. The other day I had to go to work on my uh, bathroom uh, toilet and I had to change the canister because the canister had broken and so it wasn't doing the job that it was supposed to. And when I went to put the hose back onto the new canister. It was brittle. It was hard. It wouldn't fit no matter what I tried. And to be honest, I was becoming downright frustrated. But I remember something that I saw on one of my wonderful YouTube videos that I enjoy watching all the time. And so I went in and I got a lighter that we use for barbecues, one of those big long jobs. And I started heating up the hose. And as I heated the hose, it became pliable. And when it was pliable enough, it slipped right onto the canister, just like it was supposed to, with no problems, and actually sealed itself tight against it. Loved ones, this is why God uses his Holy Ghost fire for you. He wants you pliable so he can use you and move you into places that you couldn't otherwise go. The other thing that we see is a loss of pressing forward with the mandate that God has given us. Enticements from external sources, distractions, takes one's thoughts and focus. 
allurement to look upon evil as natural. One forgets the danger of evil. Have you noticed lately how many programs are wrapped in the occult today? They are insurmountable. And it, you can't turn on the TV without finding some occultish item going on. And it is that softening of you, that making, oh, well, that's not so bad. But don't be fooled, my friend. That's Satan setting you up for the fall because he's not there to uplift you. He's there to bring you down. As the scripture says, he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy you with every fiber of his body. Don't ever take it lightly what Satan is doing in the world today. Enticements from external sources. Distractions takes one's focus and thoughts. One forgets the danger of evil. I know I'm repeating that, but it's important. Don't forget the dangers of evil. Next, enticement from internal desires. Tolerate things not normally allowed. Allowing senses to activate emotions. Allowing senses to activate emotions. One stops hating evil. The next area we look at is the distortions about God. Justifications of thoughts and actions. Believing the falsehoods and the lies. False beliefs becoming strongholds in the heart. It is so amazing how many so-called churches today have let the leaven in so that it has tainted the whole bread that is in the loaf that is in that church. I just sit amazed sometimes. Being, believing in falsehood and lies, false beliefs becoming strongholds in the heart, indifferent and lukewarm religion. Hey, how about an attitude of self-centeredness? What's in it for me? Come on, preacher, tell me, tell me. I want my ears tickled. Independence from God and man. The onset of bondage and slavery. It is the beginning of death. Yielding members of our body as instruments of sin. Secretly partasting in sinful behavior. Openly participating in sinful behavior. Speaking out against those who preach and teach purity and holiness. I will never forget how the world came down on two preachers who dared say that with 9-11 that it was God's judgment on us. And all the world said, how dare you? How dare you? Shut your mouth. We don't want to hear you. Well, guess what? They didn't shut their mouth. They kept speaking, but they were speaking to an audience who had no ears to hear anymore. Let's take a look at Steps to Freedom from James 4, 7, and 8. Submit yourself to the Lord. This means a real acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord. It means acknowledging that you're not your own. Whether you have been purchased by the body and the blood of Christ. It means submission to complete authority of Christ for everything in your life. The next part, resist the devil. 
This means purposing in our hearts that we will not be defiled and we will not defile ourselves. It means learning to say no to temptation and the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. I want to point out something here. You can't do it on your own. Loved ones, if you're caught up in some sinful nature, quit trying to stop it on your own. It doesn't work. You know what works? Getting close to Jesus and saying, Lord, I can't do this. I don't even know how to stop it. And then let the Holy Spirit come in and do it on your behalf. And as he does it, he strengthens you that then you can say no through the power in the strength of the Holy Spirit. It means to partner with Christ and other believers in the unity of the Spirit and in the fellowship of the saints. Then the next part, draw near to God. We need to know him and to do so, we must know about him through his word, through prayer, and through meditation. We draw near to God by self-examination of our motives and accountability to one another. Moving closer to God is made possible by our desire and willingness to be more like Christ. I want to kind of share something here. Who are your friends? If your friends are of the world, that's what you're going to start thinking. If your friends are godly, that's also what you're going to start thinking. Moving closer to God is made possible by our desire and willingness to be more like Christ than ourselves. That's why Paul said, I'm a bondservant of Jesus Christ. Me too, Paul. I'm a bondservant to Jesus Christ. I don't need to own myself. He owns me lock, stock, and barrel. Cleanse your hands from all sin. This means sin, ceasing any activity of impurity and getting rid of any possessions that represents its evil. <laughs> I can remember when I was first baptized in the Holy Spirit and the Lord convicted me of some stuff that I was reading and I won't say that I had a bonfire, but I'll tell you what, I sure got rid of a lot of dirty books that weren't supposed to be a part of my life anymore. It also means restitution and repentance to wash away all guilt and shame from our past behavior. That's one of the things that I like about the self-help groups such as AA and A. The one thing that they do teach that I really approve of is if you have faulted another, go to them. You know, make it right. Don't hold on to it. Because in truth, the only one that's being held in bondage is you. They might have even forgotten about it. And don't, might not even know what you're talking about. On the other hand, it might release them to have liberty in Christ also. Purify your hearts of double-mindedness. This is accomplished by forgiving others in the same spirit which Christ has forgiven us. Forgiveness also allows a clear conscience of all offenses and depressions caused by anger. This is turning our back on anything that evil represents and turning towards Jesus Christ. To live in freedom, one must allow the Holy Spirit to recharge our nature from our own natural born nature to a spiritual nature by being born again by the Spirit. When we are reborn again, it is the Holy Spirit who is imparted to us to give us a new nature, never to allow a sinful nature to rule us again. Only the Holy Spirit can change our nature. Are you willing to be changed? Are you willing to walk in the newness of life? 
if you are, God's calling you to a wonderful path. He's calling you to a place where he can use you and be glorified by his name and his word and the changes that he's made in you. I look at some of my friends and I know what their lives were before, but they're not those people anymore. Loved ones, they're a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. They walk in liberty. And yeah, Satan comes along with people that want to remind them of their past. But hey, forget the people. Remind Satan of his future because he's the culprit. And we will never bow our knee to him. For we bow our knee to Jesus Christ. In him only do we serve. God bless you as you walk in liberty and freedom and not as a slave. Be not brought back into bondage again, whether physically or spiritually. Walk in the liberty that Christ has set us free. God bless you. Music